It's the ultimate test of man and machine. Production cars off the showroom floor, racing around one of the world's iconic racetracks, Mount Panorama in Bathurst. And now this tradition continues with the creation of a brand new endurance race, the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. More than 50 teams across five classes have gathered together on Easter Sunday to take on a racetrack that always throws up the unexpected at any time. And at the end of six hours of racing, only one team can be crowned champion. Welcome to the ultimate showroom showdown, the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour. It's a beautiful day at Mount Panorama and what a better way to start a brand new Easter tradition. The High Tech Oils, Bathurst 6 Hour. The showroom showdown for production cars on the mountain should be a great show. But the big story leading into this big race is the Bathurst return, the one and only Chas Mostert. All eyes this weekend will be on the high profile return of Pro Drive Racing Australia's Chas Mostert to Mount Panorama. Last year broke my leg and, and a couple other things hit. I won the 2014 Bathurst 1000 here in V8 Supercar. It's got good history for me, it's good and bad. He returns to the mountain with longtime friend Nathan Morecambe in the DPO BMW 335i. We've just been preparing it the last six months and getting it ready for this race for me and Chaz to go out and push for the win. Have guys like Paul Morris, you know, getting the call up to come jump in a BMW as well. It's uh, pretty exciting to be racing against those guys. And, you know, obviously me and Paul won the Bathurst here in 2014. So we got a little bit of rivalry going on track. So hopefully me and Nath can knock him off today. Mostert's 2014 Bathurst co-winner, Paul Morris, is a last minute call up to the Road Chill Express BMW team. He replaces Australian Speedway icon, Barry Graham, who was to share the car this week with Luke Selb. The M135i threw a Conrad out on Friday afternoon, destroying their only engine. But thanks to some help from Morris, the replacement was secured from Sydney and installed overnight. What we heard happen here was just a freak, freak thing, which is pretty unusual for a, for a BMW. So we sourced an engine overnight and when we got it here, it wasn't quite what it was represented to be, so we haven't been to bed yet, we're still pushing on. Garth Walden and his GWR team have meticulously prepared a brand new Mercedes-Benz AMG A45 for car owner Ron Sell. The Merc is lacking race miles, but with his prior Bathurst experience and a wealth of knowledge, the Sydney Cider is confident that the car can be competitive even after a brush with the concrete in qualifying. We had two class wins here in 08, 09, uh, a couple of class poles, uh, two ninth outright, so you've had a little bit of success over over the four years that we ran it as a production car, so we know what it takes to uh, get a car home in, uh, in such a big race. Chad Nail and Richard Crail in the commentary box, ready for the six hour. This is going to be a very special day at the mountain. I love these kinds of races, Chad. There's so many stories to follow throughout the field, lots of tales to tell. Some of them tales of woe at the end of six hours around this place, but it's always exciting. Endurance racing at Mount Panorama, there's something special about it. Let's hear from some of the men who've made this happen with our Andrew Rawl down on the Mount Panorama grid. Thank you, Richard, and I'm with uh, James O'Brien, uh, the promoter of the Bathurst Six Hour, and James, it's back. Uh, it's great to be at the mountain any time, but to introduce a new race on the calendar at the home of motorsport, four production cars, feels good. And we all know, uh, you know, you had uh, great success with the 12 hour. Um, what was the, uh, the idea of, uh, with bringing the six hour back? Look, a lot of the cars behind us here raced in the early 12 hours. And, and as the 12 hour developed and the sports cars came in, uh, you know, these cars sort of got pushed out a little bit. So we thought uh, the time is right, the 12 hours booming. Let's reintroduce an endurance race just for production cars. George, uh, high tech oils, the Bathurst six hour, uh, what a mixture. Well, it's amazing for us. It's a feeling that we um, thought we'd never see, actually, being 25 years old this year. So it's a bit of a milestone for High Tech Oils, Australian brand, you know, in Australian, in the state of New South Wales still. So it's great to have our name on that big board behind us. I was going to say, uh, just have a look around there. High Tech Oils, Bathurst, uh, how does it make you feel? Uh, pretty excited and, you know, proud, really, for have an Australian family-owned business. And I think we're the first 
independent oil company outside the majors to be actually sponsor Bathurst. And of course, uh, I've also got with me the uh, the Mayor of Bathurst. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, where else would you want to be? It's Easter weekend, the sun is shining, uh, everyone's out. Uh, what, what a turnout. Well, it is a great turnout. And where else would you rather be on Easter up here at a very iconic place, Mount Panorama? You know, it is one of the most well-recognised places right, right throughout Australia. And isn't it great to think that we have an Australian-based company, an Australian-owned company that's the sponsor for this weekend, the High Tech Oil Six Hour. I think it has a certain ring about it and uh, uh, and you know what a what a great roll up in excess of 50 cars on the grid and as James was saying before I mean to bring production car racing and to give it focus I think there are a lot of uh, drivers and teams from right around Australia who are very pleased that this event is on this weekend. Well, gentlemen uh, the grid is lined up as far as the eye can see you guys enjoy the racing and uh, Richard Krell back to you. Thank you Rollsy. It's a great event, great to have people like High Tech Oils and the Bathurst Regional Council on board. This is going to be a ripping motor race, Chad. There's so many stories to follow throughout the field, some very high performance cars at the front. But you've got to remember, this is a production car race. As we confirm the grid, there are stories right up and down this field. When you look through it, very hard to pick a winner here. Linton and lay off the pole, didn't actually get the quickest time in qualifying, but Chaz Moss did after setting the quickest time for pole has been relegated 10 grid spots. Will be interesting to watch the BMW pick through this field in the early laps. Yeah, I'd suggest they'll charge through fairly rapidly to the pointy end of the field too in the DPO BMW. So 50 cars set to take the starter. Every car that qualified will start the race. There might be a few walking wounded at the back after some overnight dramas. The big story that Luke Searle, Paul Morris BMW changed the engine. They're on the grid, they're rolling round. Not sure how healthy that car is. It might not make it a long way. But that's the beauty of endurance racing at Mount Panorama. Onboard cameras right throughout the field, thanks to V8Race.com as they go past the Ridges Bathurst Chase Motel and onto the start finish grid. A rolling start at Mount Panorama. And for the first time, the High Tech Oils Bathurst Six Hour is underway on the mountain. Great start from the CXC Global Mitsubishi, Dylan Thomas from the third row down the inside. Good start, but it's BMW and Mercedes-Benz drag racing up Mountain Straight for the first time. And one didn't quite make it around the first corner as well. Six hour race, you're always going to get one or two casualties in the early stage as we plunge up Mountain Straight for the first time. It was a very aggressive start, wasn't it, from Dylan Thomas. Look to the inside straight away. There's Chas Most to the inside up towards turn two. Yeah, dives down the inside of Tony Virag. He's in the first of the HSVs. This car has been uh, consistently the fastest of the Aussie built products all weekend long but Virag knows that this is a long motor race and Mostert storming through already near the top five. Have a look at this field. Mitsubishi's BMWs, the HSVs at the front down to the pack of Toyota 86s racing in Class D right down to the baby Clark cars at the back of the field. There's so many stories and already a little bit of contact. This is one of the Class D Toyotas, Chris Reeves behind the wheel. So climbing the mountain for the first time of what will be easily over 100 laps of racing today. The clock starting, tyre pressures set low and starting to rise. We can expect to see the front running cars in a minimum of four times and already a bit of a breakaway starting at the front pack. Yeah, these three have scampered away and Dylan Thomas has made a very good start on the CXC Global Mitsubishi. They've lacked the outright pace in practice and qualifying of the AMG A45 and especially the BMWs, but we all felt that these Evos are going to be strong over a race distance. They've got such good pedigree of a long distance racing in production cars over the last, well, 10 years, back through the Bathurst 12 hour days. And a great start for Thomas. He'll team up with Bathurst local Terry Nightingale. Particularly the CXC Global Racing Team. Three car operation here, including a pair of brothers a bit further down the pack, and what a good lead it is at the end of Conrod, and into the chase for the first time for the little Mercedes. Hard under brakes comes Dylan Thomas, gee, good start off the third row, he's picked off a lot of BMWs in the early stage of this race. BMW quickest in practice, qualifying, but in the race, it's gonna be led at least the first lap by Mercedes as this battle continues for second all the way down to Murray's. Lap one of a six hour motor race. They're hard at it, and that's a position gain, so. The CXC car moves forward. Berwick Linton, he knows how to play the long game. He's third. Chaz Mostert from 11th to 4th on the opening lap. Storming stuff. Then the squirt Rod Salmon. Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10. The Sharon Rentals car is next. Then Tony Virag, first of the big HSVs. 
a little bit further back in the pack. There's David Wall, the Wilson Security Evo. They will be a contender today. They don't have the raw speed of the outright cars, but they'll be good in the long game. And two pretty handy drivers around Mount Panorama. Yeah, David Wall and John Bauer, both with a lot of experience this track. And uh, we're hearing the ports of the number 62 BMW being stopped oh. on turn two. There it is as well, pulled over to the left-hand side. So that's the fastest car of the weekend through Friday with uh, Luke Sell originally slated to drive with Barry Graham. He was ruled out with health issues overnight, replaced by Paul Morris. Then as soon as the dude got in the car, really unfortunately blew an engine, put a, a leg out of bed, as they say, raced overnight to get a replacement, just got to the grid. It was overheating. It's brought the safety car out for the first time today. And unfortunately, their high-tech oils back the six hour hasn't gone too long. Yeah, after bringing the dude in, that is very disappointing indeed. We'll check out one or two replays of the start thanks to v8race.com right on board. Oh. oh, wow, that just never turned in down at Murray's. It's a very unusual incident. It looked like something broke in the steering. So this car, Ed Singleton, will co-drive today, the MPA Projects car. Now, that was the start from Dylan Thomas. I'd say he went right on the green. Race Control may have a look at that for going a little bit early, but as soon as the green goes, you're allowed to be overlapping with the car in front on the restart. Here it is on board the Evo. Gee, there was barely any room up the left-hand side of the Sharon Rentals BMW. Four-wheel drive helping to lay the power down into the first corner. Very aggressive start. So disappointing, unfortunately, for these guys that are out of the day, and Paul Morris never even got to get a start. Let's hear how he's feeling right now with Rawlsey. Yes, Paul, uh, you defied the odds. You got the car to the start line and uh, the weekend's just got worse. Uh, we thought this might happen, so we just had to take the start of the race and then we had a um, uh, water hose come off and we dumped a lot of water and we couldn't get it back into it. But we have started the race. They'll probably take the car back to park for them. Eh? We'll get it back here, get it cooled down, get some water in it and we'll just keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. That's sort of a theme song for motor racing at Bathurst, isn't it? Especially production car endurance racing. You've just got to keep the car on the racetrack. So set for a restart. What about this start for the Garth Walden Ben Porter AMG A45? That car has been a rocket ship since first practice. And Garth, a very experienced driver, steering it well. Restart on lap six and Berwick Linton away quickly in the BMW. Applying the pressure. How cool is the shot from above turn one? That's held corner from above. It's a rarely seen angle. It was an aggressive restart, wasn't it, for Linton and the Bruce Linton BMW making an early start, but uh, unfortunately couldn't quite get the inside sit down towards turn one. And again, we see the little nimble Mercedes duck off with a very good restart. That car built in Sydney for this event by Garth Walden Motorsport and doing a really good job in the early stages of this race. We should send a shout out to Ron Searle, who's the car owner there, unfortunately. Ron's not real well at the moment. We wish him all the best. Garth and Ben doing their absolute best to put on a good show for that brand new Mercedes-Benz. Could that be the new Evo of production car racing? The Mitsubishi's have dominated for so long. A couple of Bathurst 12-hour victories. They've dominated in the national and state-level production car scenes. The raw speed from that Mercedes-Benz could be a sign that the guard is changing. And what about Chaz Mostert? Already P4, six laps into the race. Oh, lifting the left front up. That Hankook tyre was dangling as it took through Reed Park. That was exciting to watch. And now back over the top we go. He is turning on a very quick opening stint. He's just happy to actually get a chance to qualify the car. Still hasn't really got through qualifying at the mountain without some form of judicial hearing or accident, as was the case in last year's Bathurst 1000. Well, this was the first time he was able to qualify for a race at Bathurst, which is a remarkable story for Chaz Mostert. Finally got on the grid, got to start the race, and all is good. And now looking down the inside of Berwick Linton in the battle for first BMW, the 335i. This car with heaps of experience on the mountain. Couple of 12 hours to its credit in 07 through 2010. The production car era there. The car hasn't been used for a couple of years. The mates decided to get it out and go racing. And unfortunately, the Cavich boys have stopped their Subaru parked on the run up the hill to Solomon Park. There's a chance though for Mostert to pounce and to the inside he moves. That's third position from 11th. Linton giving him a bit of racing room down at the chase. He is on an absolute charge and this is a class B BMW fighting with the four wheel drive cars at the front doing a very good job. And the Cavich boys with Kieran Pilkington, HQ racer and saloon car racer. They've got that car going. Well, they've conducted some form of repair on the run. It's a restart, I think. Good old fashioned yeah. restart. We check out the replay under brakes. 
classic manoeuvre. I mean, with a car with little aero on an all-weather tyre, that is a very brave move to pull off in the early stages of any race. Chaz Mostert showing he has absolutely no demons with the mountain this weekend. And that car consistently one of the fastest down Conrad Strait. Let's have a listen. Wasn't too happy going up the hill out of the cutting, was it? Did a really good job to get that car put over to the left-hand side. A lot of blind corners around the mountain. Just about where Dick Johnson found the rock, wasn't it? Early 80s. Managed to get it going in a dangerous part of the road and certainly had he not been oh. able to get that fired up, it would have been safety car. That was busy. Tony Olford, the Donut King BMW, dicing with the East Holiday Park Mitsubishi. That's the David Wall, John Bauer car. This is a feisty battle pack, bottom half of the top 10. And Tony Virag in the big HSV has been in the thick of the action since the green flag dropped on this one. Yeah, Aussie muscle, not short of the case up a hill, but I tell you what, that, uh, that Lancer of Wall and Bow this weekend has been slow in a straight line up the mountain, down the mountain in practice and qualifying. They believe a good 20 to 30 kilometers per hour slower than the faster runners. I think we've got a pretty good example of how much it does struggle in a straight line then with a huge queue of cars ganging up on him. Very defensive in the early stages so far. The key in this race will be to stay on the lead lap, Chad, and through the four compulsory pit stops for the outright cars, three in classes C and D. So four outright stops in a six-hour race. You want to go an hour and 25, an hour and 30 into the race before you want to start making your first pit stops. But you've got to bear in mind, if you've got two drivers in your car, you can only drive three and a half hours of the race. So it really is split evenly between the two. That's a tight moment. Down through the S's on the run to the elbow. Wow, the Sherrins, nice defensive job to get out of the way, but that was tense. So the uh, Allen East owned Mitsubishi, quick across the top, but definitely struggles in a straight line. The Sherrins will probably be right on their bumper down the bottom, and the fight for second is on. Chas Mostert pulling the exact same move we saw earlier. Just not quite close enough to pull it off this time. Dylan Thomas hangs on to second. Do these guys know this is a six-hour endurance race? Frantic start to this one. It's been very entertaining in the early stages. Under the Hitachi Bridge and down into Murray's Corner. This is a great fight. It's for second, third and fourth. All the while Garth Waldman pulling away in that brand new AMG A45 Mercedes-Benz. He's done a fair bit of testing in it, but it is race unproven. It is yet to do a full distance. It is yet to do an endurance race. So Garth and Benny Porter learning on the way today in that Mercedes-Benz. So far, so good. It is, of course, very early days. We're talking about a two-litre four-cylinder four-wheel drive. That's what that little Mercedes is. It's amazing that it's so quick in a straight line, and that is back in the camp of the Mercedes. And that car, like we said, built in Sydney is Most It moves into second, potentially here under brakes, and gets the job done. That BMW, very good in a straight line, but more so under brakes. We're seeing where Chaz Mostert's skill shines through. Dylan Thomas thinks it's just not worth arguing. Being a slightly older car, it might not have quite the same amount of drag as the current spec cars do. So it's always been one of the quickest cars down the chute here this weekend. Over 260 k's an hour, we clocked that car in qualifying early in the weekend. Hooks a wheel coming over the crest. That bump there coming out of the cutting is flat these days in cars with so much downforce and grip, but in a production car, you get those revs flaring and the car gets light. And that's a pretty textbook Bathurst move there from a bloke that knows this place very, very well indeed. The 2014 1000 winner, Chas Mostert moving his way forward. He's second. How far away from the lead of the race is he? Here's Tony Alford here in the Donut King. BMW and under a fair bit of heavy fire here from one of our Class A Lancers, one of two, oh, <laughs> nearly became one of one of our Melbourne Performance Centre's prepared Lancers. Usually we see Melbourne Performance Centre taking on the mountain at the 12-hour with Audis, but here they are at the six-hour, half the distance of the race, but putting on a good show. And they've got one of the Audi drivers in this car. Steve McLaughlin has had to jump in at the last minute alongside Rob Marshall. Uh, Rob was due to drive with his son Shane. Unfortunately, Shane broke his wrist earlier in the week. So was unable to drive. That's pretty unfortunate stuff. As the Brains Trust down at the DPO camp. Nigel Bowling on the left, Bob Riley on the right. Oh, that's Tony Virak. This was the leading HSV spun up at the elbow. And he's facing the wrong way. So was there contact to send the big HSV pointing in the wrong direction? Oh, oh no. no. One of our three CXC Global Mitsubishis. It's the Wade Scott car. So there's been contact, I think, between these two. On oh, the Kirkham's Mazda stopped going on the run up the hill as well. The two Policina Motorsport Evos go past in team formation. There's 
could almost be a safety car. Let's check out the replay once again. Wasn't quite far enough up the inside. Heavy contact and backwards into the fence in a big way as well. Gee, how many drivers have come to grief through Forest Elbow over the years. Virag had no idea it was coming. Showing that car with a number of guys with youth experience, including Jeremy Gray. And we're going to see the first of the pit stops here. Now, it is just outside that window from opening, so it's worked out quite well here. It should open within the safety car period. Pretty hard to pull up in your own box when you can't see out of the windscreen. That's the problem for the Scott and Hanley CXC at the moment. And it's been a rough weekend already for CXC Global. Their lead car has been going well. Oh, These guys so chipping away, but the third car still sitting in the garage. The uh, Ustheisen brothers out of New South Wales, unfortunately going anywhere. So now Dylan Thomas pit, so that window just opens. So this is timed perfectly. He's loosening the belts. He'll hand over to Terry Nightingale, the Bathurst local second generation driver. Now there's a mandatory stationary time of two minutes in pit lane, and it's time from pit entry to pit out to just over two and a half minutes. Let's go down to the lane. Rawlsey's found Wade Scott, who was caught in with that drama up at Forest Elbow. Thanks, Richie. Uh, I'm with Wade Scott and uh, Wade. Fantastic job getting back unsighted there. What happened? Uh, basically, I was behind the Commodore going down through the uh, skyline through that. Um, going into Forest Elbow, I had a look on the inside. I thought I was, I was definitely far enough up and he, what happened is he turned straight across in front of me and that was it, into the wall. He spun around, I've hit the wall and almost lost it. Um, and then the bonnet came up as well, so yeah, it was very hard trying to get back without trying to cause any other incidents, obviously, so yeah. It's tough, isn't it? So early in a motor race, Chad, that stuff like that can happen. Just got to get it repaired and get out. Here's a key pit stop. The two best mates swapping positions in the BMW. Lost it out, more come in. Let's go back to the lane and hear from Dylan Thomas, who's jumped out of the Mitsubishi. Dylan Thomas, uh, fantastic start from you guys. Yeah, it was pretty good. The cars, our qualifying pace didn't show our potential of our car. Um, we're missing the ACD, the active centre diff, so we're probably down about a second. You know, early days, P3, we're mixing amongst it when we're getting through traffic just as well as everyone else is, so um, we're in the game. Okay, so safety car conditions here at Mount Panorama. The high tech all six out to continue with the restart on the other side of this short break. Back to Mount Panorama, restart number two in the high tech oils. Bathurst six hour for 2016. We're back to green flag racing. Whole host of pit stops have happened. Driver changes underway and the race strategy will now start to play itself out. And this is always a busy time. The BMW looking to work its way through. Chris Reeves, some of the slower cars, the class cars that are such a feature of endurance racing at Mount Panorama. Well, that's a busy scene on the restart. This is the problem when you've got a few of our Class D or Class E, even Class I cars towards the front, it can get very tight. We ride on board with one of those cars right now in Class D. This is the leading Toyota 86 of Christopher Reeves, and that is the closing distance between some of our Class A and Class B cars when they go whizzing past in a straight line. And sometimes these cars are actually just as quick through the mid corner. You can see it there, not giving away much uh, through turn two at Griffin's Bend. However, when they start firing up the hill, Little Toyotas and indeed the smaller class cars struggling for ultimate performance. So it's a balancing act. The drivers need to be patient through the top of Mount Panorama. And if you have to, give away a few seconds now because you can get them back when you get past on Conrod Straight. Terry Nightingale now behind the wheel, the CXC Evo. You heard from Dylan Thomas before the break. They're missing the working Senate diff in this car, which means the four-wheel drive system not quite working to their advantage through the corners. And that's through the slow speed stuff. but. The flowing stuff across the top, this car's pretty good. Tell you what, Krause, Terry's not taking <laughs> no. any prisoner on his, on his first green lap. He was picking guys off in the approach to Reed Park up the inside. Do so you want to know that you've been seen trying to get moves done here or up on the top of the mountain as well as the RX-7 goes around the top. Chaz Mostert, what a great drive from 11th to 2nd of the opening stanza off the race. He's back in the pits and out of the car, ready to chat to us right now. Great start from you guys. Uh, how was it from your perspective? Yeah, opening lap was real good. Um, everyone's pretty courteous out there, which is great. So, um, yeah, no, a couple of lap traffic cars kept making the gap going between us and the, and the Mercedes. So, um, yeah, we just done a stop then. But Nathan, the car, hopefully likes the car and uh, see him start the pointy end. 
So in from the lead. This team elected not to stop under that safety car. So they're playing more to their fuel window than they are the safety cars at the moment. The Mercedes crew from Garth Walton Racing. So pit stop underway. They're going to put new hand cook control tyres on. And that's a drama for the Colin Osborne Renault McGann RS. It stopped on the exit of the cutting. They've had a few little technical dramas with these cars over the course of the weekend. But like the Subaru earlier, they've got it fired out. Meanwhile, back to pit lane. Garth Walden is out of the leading Mercedes-Benz. I'm with Garth Walden and Garth, uh, that was uh, 27 near perfect laps there. Yeah, the car's fantastic. Like from the start to when I pitted, uh, the car's been so great. It's looking after its tyres, looking after its brake. Got a little, the tyres got a little hot when uh, I was getting chased by Chaz and the safety car sort of helped cool the tyre down and then we could push on again and the car was perfect right to the end. Really experienced driver Garth Walton is as we pick up the battle for the lead right now and this is getting very tight in traffic. So Nathan Morecambe hunting down Terry Nightingale. This is a great scrap. BMW V Mitsubishi and they're dealing with lap traffic while they're at it under the Hitachi Bridge. Morecambe has a look down the inside. Under brakes, gets it stopped. There's a lap car in front that could make things interesting. And Nightingale holds on around the outside. Brave stuff by the Bathurst boy. He is driving his little heart out. Quick flash on the Oh, they're going to go beams. either side of the lapper. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Wild. This that's is huge racing. Nightingale holds on, keeps the boot into it. Morecambe will go through, but that is an awesome exchange. Great oh, racing wow. room given by both of them. Even if Terry had to take to the dirt, that is superb motorsport. You could see that shaping up for a second, then you thought, no, they're not going to split the lapper, surely, but they managed to make it stick. They go past another one of our... Renault McGains that are in the field and up towards turn two. They are now in the lead of the race from 11th on the grid. Best mates they are. Let's check out the replay. This was frantic action. Looking in the left mirror, left him just enough room to operate. And then this is it, down the top of the front straight. This is amazing stuff. And great respect from Morecambe to allow racing room. This is on the lap car, the Commodore, that we saw off at turn one. Nightingale bouncing out over the kerb and into the shrubbery on the outside of the road. Here it is. Kept the boot into it though. Listen to this. Yeah, didn't lift. Didn't lift on the limiter. Oh. That goes past. That's big. That's huge. The brothers O'Donnell from GWS Motorsport off at the chase. Definitely a safety car. And beached at the end of the chase as well. That is a nasty spot to go sideways and into the fence and straight away. Yes, the call oh, goes no. out. Oh, he can't come in like that. Nightingale just missed the call or got it too late. Needed to make that pit stop happen with the safety car surely coming out. Morecambe was on the ball, and let's check out this moment. Losing the rear at top speed, well and truly over 200 clicks. Always going to be a frightening moment. So one of eight combinations with family members in it this weekend. Pete O'Donnell, long-time campaigner with his two boys, the O'Donnells, the GWS 130i BMW off the road. And this is that commitment. He got the call late, but you cannot cross that unbroken yellow line committing into pit lane. So he had to go around again, and Morecambe pits. And tyre wear, not a massive issue in this race, Chad, but they feel like that they were given 24 brand new tyres to start the weekend, that if they can, they're just going to keep throwing tyres at the car. Why not? Make sure you've got the best set of rubber on every time you can. And Chaz Mostert back in that car. So let's check out our Ridges top 10 leaderboard. Terry Nightingale takes the lead of the race due to the Mostert Morgan pit stop. Eric Linton running third at the moment. Bow up to fourth. The V8Race.com class leaders. Richard Bloomfield in front now in Class B2 in the HSV uh, SS Commodore. Mark Eddy teaming with Francois Joy in the Renault McGann RS265 leading Class C. Those class battles, one to follow. Racing underway, Mostert running second. Dylan Thomas is third. So again, the fight for the podium spots in this race continuing as if it was a 15 minute sprint. It's not, it's a six hour enduro. There's a lot to play for in this motor race and a lot of very strong cars in strong positions dealing with a lot of strong lap traffic and the wheel's fallen off. That wheel came off that HSV. You can see it bouncing around. And potentially on the racing line. Hopefully it's just going to stay over to the left-hand side. Now, was there contact? Or was it just a bit of an optical illusion when that wheel came off and it's rolling the wrong way down the racetrack and will eventually end up on the racing line at Murray's? It's very well behaved though. Look at it avoiding all of the other racing cars. And it's going to get itself off the racetrack too. It'll just oh. run along the kerb. Oh, going to hang a right. How many times have we seen this in motor racing before? <laughs> a certain racing Canberra years ago. So have a look. 
So mossed it through the corner. The HSV oh, it was turned done in. Then. Yeah. So as he turned into the corner, it popped off, and that HSV with support from CXC Global, the car that it almost crashed into. This will be interesting. Yeah. Watch out the windscreen here. The left rear tire already wobbling, and this is a good bit of evasive driving because that car, oh. HSV almost stops mid-corner and a very good bit of driving there by Dylan Thomas. Oh no! Oh dear. Mercedes in pit lane with trouble. It's been a great stint so far. You can see Garth Walden standing in the garage. Ben Porter, very experienced GT racer behind the wheel. They'll get this car in the garage. Well, have the reliability niggle struck for a brand new race car and it's baptism of fire on Mount Panorama. An ex uh, Brad Jones. Oh, oh, I know, and Dylan Thomas in the pits now. This car was going so well. It was pretty much the only uh, CXC Global car that hadn't had issues this weekend. And unfortunately, it looks to be going down a few laps at the moment as once again, Morecambe and Mostert's BMW goes to the lead with Nathan at the wheel. And that car sounded like it was on three cylinders. That uh, Mitsubishi Lancer in pit lane, so serious problems. Not going to get around Mount Panorama on three cylinders. What a shame from a combination that were firming as race favourites. Let's head to the lane and hear from Terry Nightingale, sadly out of the race. Tezza, not the sight you wanted to see after uh, such a uh, fantastic stint from you early on. Uh, the car parked up. Yeah, unfortunately, Rosie, there's, there's a problem with the vehicle. Um, Dylan's sort of coming unexpectedly, so yeah, he's pulled it up and it seems to be a miss in the car, so yeah, we've just got some data from the vehicle now. And, Anyway, it's a long race, mate. These things happen, so we'll just wait and see. We'll, we'll try and get the car back out and see if we can keep it in the top ten. What about that? Two out of the front three running cars in the early stages of this race sitting back in the pits, including this one. And this is the bugbear of production car teams who try and unpick the manufacturer ECUs. They often go into limp mode, these production cars, because they just can't deal with the extreme conditions of motor racing, especially at Mount Panorama. They throw their arms in the air and go, I can't deal with it. And they have to reset the computer or turn the car off and on again to reboot the systems. And this is another of the leading cars, Tim Lay and Beric Linton. Tim Lay behind the wheel had done a brilliant job and they've also struck dramas. So the leading contenders are falling. Let's find out what happened to that Mercedes Benz. Garth Walden is down in the lane. Garth, uh, pit stop for the, uh, for the Mercedes there. What's the problem? Yeah, obviously uh, it's gone into some sort of limp mode and um, we're not quite sure what it is yet. We've just reset everything, went back out, it's, it's sort of gone back in it again. So we're going to come back in and try something else. Unfortunately, we sort of knew this might be on the cards. Obviously, it's a bit of an unknown. No one's, we've never run a car before in an endurance race. No one has. So, you know, we're hoping for the best, but uh, yeah, obviously uh, something's gone wrong. And more action on the racetrack as well. One of our Renault again stuck in the sand trap, and I believe that's at the chase too. So that could very well mean another safety car. Porsche Carrera Cup racer Adrian Mastronado, part of this driving squad, the second of the Osborne Motorsport cars, and the safety car back on the track. It always plays a role at Mount Panorama, and as it does, it plays into this crew, the Sharon Rentals BMW squad. Grant Sharon and Ian Sharon who have put this program together as this uh, squad pits, Nathan Morecambe will take over from this car. The Sharon BMW will also jump into pit lane, but they're on a different strategy to these leaders. And the Sharon crew always happy to roll the dice on pit stop strategy. And they're buying themselves into this race. The safety cars are helping. And what happened to the Renault? Wow, big moment. Dropped the right rear maybe just on turn in or during braking and went spearing off backwards. Lucky to get away with that. Any real damage there. So it's coming up okay so far for the Sharon Rentals BMW as the work continues back for the AMG Mercedes. Let's hear from Ian Sharon in the pits. Ian, uh, wow, did that uh, pit stop play into your hands or what? Yeah, look, it's just all falling in our place so far. You know, the first one, the second one. Couldn't picked it better. The first one we actually wanted to bring Dave in and then the safety car come out, it was just ideal. Uh, you know, he'd been in there for probably an hour and 50, so we needed to get him out. Um, so yeah, we'll give him a short stint now. I'll take my hour break and hopefully jump in and bring it home. Well, they're always in the mix. We're back to racing at Mount Panorama. Ian Sharon racing with David Ayres. Entered Michael Sharon. Ian's father in the car, but I don't know if he'll drive today. It might just be the two of them. That'll work for their strategy. Anyway, we're back to racing. And this strategy plays out, and this is really busy into turn one. 
and the pack's been separated a little bit under that safety car. So they're split into a couple of different groups and this is where it gets really dicey as the fast cars work their way through. That's the Ulsterheisen, I know the uh, CXC Global car we saw early on today. The second car, the Scott and Handley entry with the cracked windscreen, they got told by race control that their windscreen was too badly damaged. So Peter Brock style, they've had to take the front and the rear screens out. Is it air conditioning Bathurst style? I guess they chose to do that under a pit stop though, unlike that famous yeah. day at Sandown. So we go back towards the cutting and as you get later and later in the day here, the sun peers through the windscreen oh. right at that moment. It's very difficult there. The Suzuki Swift staying over the left-hand side. So they pick their way through some of our smaller Class D and E cars. That's the Trev Keen entered Mini that has been to Helen back this weekend. <laughs> they've changed engines, they've changed just about everything on the car. Missed a lot of track time, but they made the start and they were proud as punch to do so. It's a great little car. It's had a lot of time racing at Mount Panorama and it's in the race and you've just got to be in it to get to the finish. And these are critical laps after a safety car. And you often see safety cars, breeding safety cars here at Mount Panorama, especially in these longer distance races where the slower cars can often be caught out by the faster cars coming through or vice versa. See what those gremlins, they don't discriminate this weekend. We've seen them from minis, BMWs, just about every different make of car. This weekend's had some form of issues and there's David Wall still rocking the uh, Wilson Security Volvo GRM outfit. And he's ready to get back in. John Bowie's good friend. And uh, those two have raced hard against each other in the 12 hour in the past, making a very good combination in the six hour. And John Bow looking to add the six hour crown to his 12 hour victories and his Bathurst 1000 victories. Oh, and in the wall and another wheel for Wagon here at Mount Panorama. That's the Mini. We were just talking them up about how hard they fought to get into the race. They found the fence at the elbow. That'll be a safety car. That's a tough spot to be stuck and it's worked in nicely for one or two teams who'll take this safety car opportunity to make the pit stop. Now, they're using a different set of lap belts because John Bauer's quite a bit shorter than David Wall. It's not so much that John Bauer's short, <laughs> it's just Wall is an absolute giant. So different size lap belts for these two. Also that seat's on a slider as well to make up that difference. Oh, oh the right front was off well and truly early. You've got absolutely zero chance of turning left at that point. And that was heavy impact for the Mini. And there's, it's so steep and there's so much camber on the road up there at the elbow that it was clearly a passenger that, that was tough. What a shame for the Mini crew that have done such a good job. We're back to racing. That pit stop worked to treat for Wall and Bow. It's kept them right in the game. They don't have the raw speed to fight for outright victory, but they've got good pace. And I think over a distance, their car's pretty good. They'll be a factor if they can get to the final hour of the motor race. Attrition is taking its toll. Now, the field wasn't compressed on this restart, Chad. So there's quite a big gap between groups of cars here. So this group is all running on their own. There are more cars in the race than this. They just haven't got to the line yet. There they are top of the screen the Sharon's coming out there'll be a few more so it was only a very short safety car period but it split the field so this may play a role into the race strategy of some of the leading contenders who are caught in that second group of cars behind the racing train Tony Alford's drafted in an Australian GT fellow competitor in Mark Griffith to help run the Donut King BMW here it is running at the front of the field at the moment this first of the mini packs I guess split up I guess through the pit stop action that was happening during that safety car period. They didn't quite have enough time to make it around the back of the train. And so we see a couple of Beamers running at the front here, but it's been a tough day for the 81. Tim Lay and Beric Linton back on the road. We saw them in pit lane, some electrical gremlins. And oh, the Auburn brothers. Yeah, the Bathurst boys. They've worked so hard to put this program Ooh. together in the Renault, and they've got a right front puncture by the looks of it. And here's the second group. So they're all bunched together, running up into turn two. Watch out for that yellow Lancer, the East car. That is David Wall. We saw the driver change happen. And Wally's got a lot of traffic to pick through. And they're headed to the part of the racetrack where the Mitsubishi really comes into its own. To the inside of one of the big HSVs at the cutting. Make short work of that one. Next one's an 86. Do you go left? Do you go right? Well, I'm not sure the Toyota really knows which way Wally wants to go. Oh, but it gets very tight. That was tense, wasn't it? Bit of a moment. Cool, calm and collected, David Wall, usually. But might have been a slight moment for him in the car then. It's interesting that it was John Bow who actually instigated putting that program together, said he's always wanted to drive that car and was really proactive in helping get Wilson Security and Pace on board to put the program together. This is really interesting, isn't it? With a little Toyota 
every bit as quick across the top of the mountain as a big HSV. It gets different when it gets down to this end of the racetrack though. So the Sharon Rentals team cross the line to complete another lap. They're in this mix, so too. Mostert and Morecambe, and Chaz Mostert is in pit lane. You've been uh, reasonably tight-lipped with your strategy for the race so far, but we're into the final two hours, the final third. You've got one driver change uh, to bring it home. When's it going to happen? Can't tell you. <laughs> nah, uh, I don't know. They let the boys work it out. I'm sure they'll yell at me, but uh, yeah, obviously it's got to be from now to the end of the race, but uh, you know, I think we're sitting in an okay position. We're definitely in the top three there, and, and Nave's doing a great job out there now, doing some good times. So I don't know what happened under that safety car there. There was a big gap between after field. I think there might have been a crawling car, which we're all getting a bit nervous about the gap being too big. But um, anyway, we're going all right, so we'll keep chipping away. Well, I'll tell you one thing. My bet is on that being during another safety car period because they've made the three driver changes so far during safety car periods. They'll probably be loving another one. The battle for the lead is absolutely alive across the mountain as Morecambe swings to the inside. Yeah, and smart driving from Sharon. They are running slightly different strategies here, and I think the Sharons are hoping for a late safety car in this game to get themselves back on course, I suppose, with the DPO crew. There's Ian watching on from pit lane. Tense times in the Sharon Rentals camp. Oh, and David Wall in pit lane. This will cost them a chance at victory, I think, with the puncture. So this is going to drop them off strategy because they were running the same strategy as the DPO car. So they were in the mix for the race, probably not on raw speed, but on strategy they were looking good. They've got a puncture, so an unscheduled pit stop for the wall and bow combination. This is going to hurt them big time. It's 45 to 50 seconds they could not afford to lose. Yeah, and they absolutely have to come in again surely at some point in this race whether it be for fuel or just simply the driver times won't quite add up. That's really disappointing and so too the Sharon. So they've had to make a green flag pit stop. This is gonna hurt them as well. Ian will jump in for the final stint. He's a very fast racing car driver. This car's gone under the radar all weekend. Hasn't it? They're looking really strong. The pole performance outfit, Dean Lilly, experienced campaigner in V8 supercars, GT and production car racing. Oh, and in pit lane, that's Peter Green Jr., another local driver, into the gravel trap down at Murray's Corner, stuck in deep. And the safety car. Oh boy, <laughs> that came at a pretty awkward time. You reckon the Sharons would have liked to have seen that a couple minutes earlier, and they get the safety car. They wanted to get the final pit stop done. This is all turning up beautifully so far for Morecambe and Mostert. Can they hang on to win the six hour? We'll find out after this. Welcome back to our coverage of the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 hour, the first running of what is set to be a great event and the race restart is underway. It's going to be almost a sprint to the finish here. Closing stages and strategies have been playing out. So the story is the Sharon BMW is at the end of the lead lap. They are on the lead lap but they're about two and a half minutes behind the DPO BMW. They need a safety car. They need it badly too because otherwise it is going to be very difficult for them to draw in that race leading car of Chas Mostert and Nathan Morecambe on raw speed. And even if they do happen to catch it or get onto the back of it, then they've got to try and get around Chas Mostert on his return to the mountain. It's going to be a difficult day as the HSVs go at it down at turn two. It's busy, isn't it? And there's still class battles on the line and the setting sun will play a role. There's no visibility there, is there? Running up into the cutting. It's narrow, it's a funnel. It's 170 kilometers an hour at the kink, and you're blinded by the sun on a dirty windscreen, heading up the steepest bit of road in Australia on a racetrack. It's awesome. That's Muscle Brooks, Jeremy Gray at the wheel. You race up, looks to the inside, with a little bit of help almost, maybe. Interesting. It gives him a wave as well, so <laughs> sorry about that old bean as he moves on through. Very aggressive stuff, but you need to get some clean racetrack and turn some quick laps towards the end. And they've got dramas, haven't they? That HSV yep. just jumping out of the way. The Garth Walden Racing prepared SS, Commodore the VE, jumped through. Behind them is David Wall behind the East Holiday Park car. So now basically a lap behind the leaders. He's in the fight for third. And the car that we need to keep an eye on with them is that number eight Evo 10 with Michael Kane behind the wheel. Let's head down to pit lane, find out how the race leaders are feeling with not far to go. Nathan, uh, fantastic effort out there. You didn't have it all your own way. Uh, you had a bit of overtaking to do. 
Oh, I definitely had a bit of overtaking. We sort of, when I jumped in, we sort of missed the boat of coming in straight away when the safety car come out. And when we come in at first and come out uh, third place, uh, quite a fair way beyond. So I had to push hard once that safety car was gone. Um, hunting them down, just kept picking one by one, just watching the all the cars, all the slower cars, just watching the, overtaking them, being precaution of we've got to finish this race to be up there at the end. So now we're handed over to Chaz, and so hopefully he can bring it on home now. He's got good pedigree at this racetrack too with wins in oh. four. Oh, that's getting wild across the top. We've seen some pretty defensive driving out of the East Mitsubishi today. And it's all coming to a head down at turn two. David Wall is not going to surrender third place in a hurry. Just a few minutes to go in the race. I reckon two laps for the race leader. So a timed motor race to six hours. So they're racing to the clock and also the lap count. But this is the fight for third. The final spot on the podium. And it's also for the class win in A1. The extreme performance all-wheel drive turbo cars. With class B cars first and second. The rear wheel drive BMWs. What a battle, and how good this under the radar drive for Jerry Murphy and Michael Kane oh. in the pole performance Evo. David Wall is ragging this car right now. He's desperate to try and build a lead because oh. he knows Conrod's coming, so he's using every inch of racetrack to try and get away from him. He lacks speed in a straight line, and that is not where he wanted to find traffic. This is unbelievable, and what is it about Mount Panorama? There's always a major fight for somewhere on the podium with just a few laps to go and taking some pretty serious risks, trying to get a little bit of gain through the lap traffic. Shaw, Rick Shaw did the right thing. He's in the Mazda RX-8. Oh, Wall's gonna be vulnerable down the straight here. The faster Mitsubishi's lurking. You watch, he'll just chew into that small lead he's got. Wall's gonna struggle to block the whole way down Conrod. Under brakes at the end could be his only chance to try and oh, get that wow. spot back. He's putting his Mitsubishi right in the middle of the road. Driving very defensively. 15 k's an hour slower in a straight line, David Wall. But drove the thing down the middle of the road to hold his track position. An unbelievable fight for third in the closing stages of an epic high-tech oil six-hour. And here comes Michael Kane under the Hitachi Bridge. Great run, contact, oh, no. huge contact. They're both out of control and they're both off the road and they're both in the gravel. That was a huge hit, it was coming. It was always gonna happen eventually. Oh, he's got it out of the gravel. How has that happened? Just flicks it around with an amazing bit of driving. He's back on track. That's phenomenal, he's still third. He could be on the podium. What a save. High drama and walls going as well. He's got the car out of the gravel trap. Well, the beauty of four wheel drive, I guess, <laughs> Krause, he's putting a bit of sand down, but He's got now a good five to seven second buffer. He needs oh. to try and run away if there's no damage. I think that car's hurting. That cop quite a big hit. Oh, it's dropping parts. Yeah, and I think the steering might be broken as well, or at least badly bent. There's the leaders watching on. They don't need to worry about that. Barry Morecambe sitting center of screen. He knows what it's like to taste success here. That Evo is limping. It's got damage. I guess the question now is, can David Wall get back to him? Look oh. at this car. It's destroyed, it's got huge damage all down the right hand side. How bad is this car? Which is the lesser of two evils I suppose. They're both badly damaged. Now this is where it all started Chad. On the run up to turn two at the start of the lap and pretty defensive stuff and David Wall ultra committed holding on around the outside. Oh well, this is the big moment where it all came unstuck down at Murray's. It was bound to happen. Wally was putting that car everywhere. How hard did he drill that wall? It lifted the rear of the car off the ground. Back to live pictures. They're still at it. This is for third place and for the class victory. Across the top of Mount Panorama, two walking wounded Evos. Wall goes through, gets third. Unbelievable race. His teammate JB is watching on in the lane. JB, what about that? I've never seen you so much, mate, in one day of my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty too... too uh, Guys going at it pretty hard. It was amazing. Really, really good racing. I mean, that's, you know, that's what makes this place a legendary place. Wow, what an exchange. And JB gets to watch it from the comfort of pit lane. Final lap, Chad. You've lived the V8 story as much as anybody. What about this for Chazzy Mostert? Teamed up with his mate, the Demons of Mount Panorama. He talked them down, but this has got to be a big, big tick in his box for his career. 
It's going to be a second Bathurst victory in an endurance race here. He's still, <laughs> He's still on it. it. He's trying to do a so Peter Brock last lap record attempt here, but this is a, an unbelievable piece of history that we're about to see here. Returning to the mountain, he's on his way to the corner where he crashed, broke his leg, broke his wrist, stuffed up his knee, has been out of a race car ever since, and now he is making that return, and he's going to get a win with his best mate. This car hasn't even seen the mountain since 2012. Chas Mostert's lived an entire V8 supercar career <laughs> since then, including a Bathurst win. And Morecambe, who drives the car in the GT Championship that won the 12 hour, is going to get another little piece of history here. And he's had success at Mount Panorama before. He's won here in Formula Ford and in Formula 3. So he goes all right at this place, Nathan Morecambe. And this is about to be the biggest win of his career. What a tremendous way to kick off a new era and a new tradition of endurance racing at Easter. On Easter Sunday, on a beautiful day in the central west of New South Wales. It's a great part of the world and it produces incredible motor racing. Few corners to go. Nathan Morecambe with Chaz Mostert. It's a huge victory for BMW. The 335i, the venerable old hand of production car racing. It's still as good as anything out there. And it's a win for Morecambe and Mostert in the high tech oil six hour. What a day on the mountain that was. Well, they do it easily in the end, but it probably doesn't do justice for just how frantic that race was. Helped out by the safety cars, clever with their strategy, drove supremely, just nursed that car home over the last hour, not taking any risks, very smart driving. And these guys got dotted a little bit in the strategy card, but did a very good job to bring it home for second. Great drive, Ian Sharon and David Ayres across the line in second place. Let's hear from the winners, here's Nathan Morecambe. Oh, over the moon, it was awesome. And Dewey, one of my best mates, is even better. Especially around Bathurst, the main track around Australia, greatest track. So that's my third win now here out of four races, so I'm stoked for that even better. So, but looking forward to go seeing Chaz in the podium and doing champagne showers with him. <laughs> really great result for a couple of good mates. Checking out the top 10 results outright. Congratulations to Morecambe and Mostert on their outright victory here today. Wallenbau somehow they have scraped home for third after all of that and Kane and Murphy very disappointed to be not quite there inside the top four. And on the V8race.com class score, massive props to Marquis and Francois Joy, eighth outright in the Renault, tenth outright for Reeves and Kane in the Toyota. The Kearns and Cowham saloon car gets home 15th and first in Invitational and the little Nissan Pulsar wins Class E, 22nd outright. Champagne showers as Nathan Morecambe said on the Bathurst podium after a wild old day at the mountain. I think this race has got legs, Chad. What a day. What an Easter. What a fantastic way to spend Easter. And it's great to know that this event has been locked in for the next three years. I can't wait. On behalf of Chad Nalon and our entire team here at Mount Panorama, I'm Richard Crowell. Thanks for watching the High Tech Oils Bathurst 6 Hour. We'll see you in 2017.